Hello there viewer, Rita is the best ride at Alton Towers, is what I would say if I was a fool. You see what I did there, I uh, purposely missed that part out of the title so you click on the video. Well now you're here we might as well go into a bit of a deep dive into actually how good this coaster is because maybe I've been a little bit too harsh on it in the past. You're just a f***ing moron! Before we talk about anything opinionated, let's get all of that boring information out of the way first. So, Rita is an Intamin Accelerator coaster that opened in 2005, making it one of the first of the models to be constructed. It was originally known as Rita Queen of Speed, in the area called Ugland, of the Alton Towers Resort. Keep your heads back and hold on tight, we're counting down, get those engines revving. However, in 2010, the entire area was rethemed to the Dark Forest with the addition of a new Intamin multi-dimension coaster called 13. To fit in with the surrounding area, Rita Queen of Speed was shortened to just Rita and the theme was switched from a drag racer to escaping the forest in a drag racer. You must escape! Creative, I know. Rita reaches speeds of up to 60 miles per hour after being sent through its hydraulic launch, which only takes about 2.5 seconds, meaning it's pretty punchy. The rest of the layout consists of some turnaround sections and some airtime hills, all painted in a dark red or green so the highest parts of the ride blends in with the trees, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this coaster. In the year it opened, the park released a marketing campaign that stated Rita as your best Alton Towers ride ever. Rita, Queen of Speed, your best Alton Towers ride ever. But quite a lot of people would disagree. So is Rita all that bad? I mean, I think the easy answer is actually no, it's not. But why would I say that? Well, I think the coaster has always had a massive disadvantage at the park when it comes to competing against all of the other world-class coasters such as the Smiler, Nemesis, Wicker Man, and I could go on. But the point I'm making here is that the root of the problem might not be that Rita is a bad roller coaster, but more so that the other roller coasters in the park are just better and more importantly, a lot more memorable. Take Oblivion, for example. Sure, it was a groundbreaking coaster when it opened, quite literally, but unless you're using nostalgia points, it can't compare to any of the recent dive coasters out there across the globe. However, even though it's become outdated, it hasn't been forgotten due to its impressive and memorable iconography of the coaster, its branding and its theming. I don't know about you, but as someone who loves to learn about roller coasters from all around the world, I still find it way easier to remember Oblivion with its unique theming, dive into the ground, simple but impactful logo and music over quite a lot of other B&M dive coasters. If I was to ask you to name a list of B&M dive coasters off of the top of your head, which one would spring to mind first, Oblivion or Griffin at Busch Gardens? Williamsburg. And okay, I get that this logic is slightly flawed because I doubt someone living in Virginia 10 or so minutes away from Busch Gardens would remember Oblivion before Griffin, but just bear with me here. 13 is a fairly well-themed coaster with a drop track to surprise new riders, the Smiler literally has the most inversions out of any coaster in the world, Galactica is the UK's only flying coaster, yes I said only flying coaster, deal with it Flamingo Land, Nemesis has one of the most unique layouts and creative use of topography within a roller coaster, and Wicker Man has a giant wooden statue as its centerpiece with actual fire coming out of it that makes new visitors at the park do a quick double take and go, hmm, that's a bit dangerous in it. But Rita is just, well, it's just Rita. Sure, you could argue that Rita has a powerful launch that makes it stand out against the other rides, and I would agree with that if it was the fastest roller coaster in the park, but it can't even manage to do that as it's beaten by Oblivion, which is just embarrassing. This really makes Rita an irrelevant coaster when you compare it to rides that end up just being more exciting to look at and ride. I'd go as far as to say that the most exciting thing about Rita is hearing the countdown audio for the launch, which Alton Towers probably wouldn't be too happy to hear, considering that few seconds of audio would have cost them a lot less than the 8 million pounds of redundancy that is the rest of the actual coaster. Okay, I promise I'm not just trash talking Rita for the sake of it. After all, this video might have attracted some actual Rita fans and I don't want to anger anyone, so I'll clear up what I'm trying to say here. The fact is that Rita isn't a terrible coaster, or a bad roller coaster for that matter, but its downfall is that it fails to bring that unique and exciting edge that all of the other coasters in the park bring to the table, leading it to feel sort of meh. 
And the thing is, there are dozens of theme parks and amusement parks that we could put this coaster in, and it would all of a sudden be a much more appreciated ride overall. For example, if this was in Drayton Manor, it would actually do so much for the ride lineup and be a great additional factor as to why someone would want to visit the park, even if you don't personally like it. A pretty large scale roller coaster such as Rita would still look the part and feel like a solid attraction that would go along with Shockwave perfectly. It's just like putting that one niche TV show you enjoy with the most popular shows in the world. It wouldn't be able to compare when it comes to general memorability from the public. However, when it's compared with other niche shows, then it has the chance to really make a name for itself. All right, that was an appalling analogy, but I'm hoping you're sort of on the same page now. Of course, what makes a coaster actually enjoyable isn't just about the stats and how memorable it is, but also other factors such as unique elements and theming, interesting layout, a comfortable restraint system and seating, as well as decently smooth track profiling, all of which Rita lacks. If I'm being honest here, the only way to actually improve the ride would be to give it a fresh retrack, new trains with lap bars similar to Red Force, and add some more terrain and head chopper moments, similar to Taron, as that proves you don't need to have inversions to have an intense and thrilling coaster. But would that ever happen? Definitely not. The ride is far too universally disliked for the resort to ever consider throwing more money at it. Um. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. So it seems like Rita might be facing an inevitable demolition and replacement in the near future, possibly after a new secret weapon or two though, when they need to make some more space. I'll admit, as much as I wouldn't really mind seeing Rita reach a saddening demise, there's also a part of me that would shed a tear, acknowledging just how much it's done for the park and for us as a community, giving us a free punching bag to insult and always throw under the bus, even though it never did anything to deserve it, other than give me a considerable number of headaches, of course. So in light of all the negativity and pessimism this video brought around, I thought I could bring up the mood a little with a small but personal compilation of all my favourite moments the ride has given me these last few years. I'd greatly appreciate it if you clicked that subscribe button down below, but other than that, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Yeah, okay, this ride is shit. And I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. <laughs>